Hey, so welcome to the series of tutorials on live processors part one and this is the chapter which we're going to deal with in this semester and let's just talk about it. So when you talk about this chapter, uh, let's just go with the name of the chapter first and then probably we should, you know, just take it further. So let's just start. I'll grab a red one. Okay, now this chapter says about life and this chapter talks about processes. So life and processes. So these are two different words and they of course have different meanings. So what do you understand by the term or the word life? Hmm, I think it's getting a bit philosophical here. Let's just not talk about life, we'll talk about it later. So let's just move on. I have some questions ready and I guess uh, they are the ones which are very apt and I should be asking them from you. So the first one is, what makes you feel that you are alive or that you are living? Well, I have a list here, so let's just uh, quickly rush through with that. First one says, do you move? Do you have the ability to move? Okay, so you are saying it's yes. Great. Do you have sensitivity towards your external environment? Do you have that? Do you show that? Great. Okay, perfect. Do you feel hungry? I know you are always hungry. Always up to eating something, huh? Great. Next. Do you have the potential to <laughs> reproduce? Well, wow, that's like a hell lot of babies. Well, anyways, do you have that potential? I'm sure you do. If the answer for all of the above questions is yes, then don't you think these are some of the basic processes that you need to perform in order to stay alive? I mean, you should have the ability to move you should be able to give a response to your environment you should be eating you should be able to reproduce so can i say that you need to perform all these processes just to ensure that you stay alive perfect so we get this definition basic functions performed by living organisms to maintain their life on this planet are called life processes what are they called as life processes processes or things that you need to do in order to maintain your life on earth so this is what we understand by the term life processes so now let's just take a look at the various life processes that an organism needs to perform in order to ensure that he or she continues to live on this planet and these processes are true even if you are a single cell or even if you are a multicellular living organism so the first thing that we talk about here is growth so when you talk about growth growth is an irreversible change which happens in a living organism so once you've grown from this height to this height, there's no way you can go back to this height again. So in the case of humans, we say growth is limited. And if you are a plant, so let me just draw a plant a little quick. If you are a plant, so we say that your growth is unlimited. And why would I say this? Well, plants, they keep on growing throughout their life. On the contrary, humans, after attaining maturity, their growth stops. And then what sets in? Well, they start to age. They start becoming old. So aging sets in once you're completed with your growth and you are an animal. So in the case of animals, growth is limited. And in the case of plants, growth is unlimited all right so let's just uh, erase this thing and now we shall just go further let's not scribble much okay 
So the next and the most important life process is movement. Now in class 9th, you read another term, I'll add it here, which is locomotion. Now we say movement and we also say locomotion. Are these two terms synonymous or there is a difference between these two? Well, locomotion means to be able to change your position from hair to hair. On the contrary, when you talk about movement, let's just say I'm standing here and I can still move my hand maybe like this and this. Or maybe I can twist and turn my head a bit. True. So movement is something which you can show even if you are fixed. On the contrary, if you talk about locomotion, you need to change your place from one to another. So locomotion and movement, together they are shown by animals. And movement is a characteristic feature of plants. So plants, they show movement. And animals, they show both movement and locomotion. Why I'm saying plants show movement? Because they also give response to their environment. I mean, you can easily see, or you must have seen that. So for example, this is a moss stick. So many plant grows around it like this, twirling around it. So it's getting a touch from the side. So it's giving a response to the touch of moss stick. We would be talking about this in detail in our chapter, which is control and coordination. So I'll not be taking this out further here. So, so far we are done with growth and we are done with movement. So let's take it further. Okay, so now the next uh, thing that we have is nutrition which is that we all feel hungry. We need to have a source of energy so that we can survive. And if it is not there, then definitely our survival is at a stake. It's not possible. The other thing is reproduction. Now, reproduction is the ability to give birth to the young ones of your own kind. And these young ones should also have the potential to breed further and to be fertile because if they are not fertile then there's no point in having them because your species will anyways come to an end so they should be fertile in order or i must say they should be reproductively active so we're done with growth we're done with movement we're done with nutrition and we're done with reproduction So now, the next thing that we have is respiration. Now you all know that we take in oxygen and we give out what? We give out carbon dioxide. So there is a term which we all get confused with is breathing. So breathing means that you are taking in oxygen and you are giving out carbon dioxide. And respiration means that whatever food you have digested now you are going to break that down with the help of oxygen and you are going to make energy or get energy out of it so break down a food in the presence of oxygen to release energy is known as respiration or if you want to really put it short just say oxidation of food to release energy is known as respiration so after this we have another process which is control and coordination well we have a separate chapter that deals with it but for now I'll simply say control means to have command over something and coordination is to perform a series of action and in a way which is synchronous so every organ in our body knows what to do, when to do, and how to do. So we need to have control and coordination in our body or else uh, there is nothing which can happen inside our body smoothly. And the last one that I have here is excretion. Oh boy, he's in pain. 
So when you talk about excretion, you talk about releasing the waste material from your body. So it could be fecal matter or it could be the liquid, let's just say urine. Yeah. So these are the two ways through which we excrete or we release waste from our body. And it's not good to have these things retained in our body because they are toxic and they can have lots of, they can give rise to lots and lots of health issues well there is one more thing which i feel is important and some for some reason i forgot to mention here is the ability to give response to a stimuli so we all give response to the things which happen in our surroundings so let's just say if, if it was winter time going on then you would want to wear lots of clothes like sweaters, pullovers, jackets, scarves, mufflers. So what do they all ensure? They all ensure that you are maintaining the temperature of your body because you are homeotherm. So this is how we give a response to our surroundings. On the contrary, in the summertime, you would probably just want to wear a ganji or, or a cotton shirt or probably some shorts and stuff like that so this is how we are sensitive to our environment and we give response to it so today we would be talking about nutrition a bit and it's two types and in the next class we would be talking about autotrophic mode of nutrition in detail so now let's take a closer look at what exactly is nutrition so when you talk about nutrition, we say that it is a process of taking in nutrients and their utilization by an organism. So we all want to be like this and I personally feel that it's free to imagine anything out of yourself and it takes actually a lot of hard work to get into this kind of shape anyways so now we need to know that what exactly is nutrient so when you talk about nutrient we say it is an edible substance the one that you can eat that we obtain from our surroundings and we use it for obtaining energy and for synthesizing body constituents so these nutrients can be carbohydrates they can be proteins they can be fats so we need to take in all of these to ensure that we are able to maintain a healthy life so nutrition can be categorized into two types or two broad categories so these modes of nutrition are one and two so I'm sure you have heard these names earlier and they are autotrophs or autotrophic mode of nutrition and we have heterotrophs or heterotrophic nutrition. They are also referred to as producers because they can make their own food and they are consumers. They're always managing to get their food from some or the other sources so autotrophs they make their food by the process of photosynthesis so they use inorganic materials like co2 h2o and they also need the presence of sunlight and the colored pigment chlorophyll green colored actually to do this process which is photosynthesis so they make their own food by using inorganic things like h2o and carbon dioxide they need the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll molecule and they do photosynthesis okay and they make their own food actually now there are some other type of living organisms these living organisms they are also autotrophs but they never perform photosynthesis they never have chlorophyll we call them as chemotrophs 
Chemotrophs are the ones those make their food with the help of inorganic chemicals like sulfur and nitrogen. So they do not need sunlight, they do not need chlorophyll. You find them under oceans and they're actually attached to the ocean floors or uh, some of the other extreme conditions and wherein you cannot imagine that someone would actually live over there. Some of the bacteria are actually chemotrophs, so they are kind of only present, present everywhere. Heterotrophs are humans. We can't make our own food and we're always relying on other sources to get the food, to get the food. And fungi can also be put here. Sorry, fungi. Now the mode of nutrition for fungi is saprophytic, which means they feed on dead and decaying matter. So saprophytic mode of nutrition is actually a part of heterotrophic mode of nutrition. So I think we'll do it till here only and in the next class we would be talking about autotrophic mode of nutrition in detail and we would be discussing the process of photosynthesis in detail. So till then keep waiting for this area and then we will take it further.